sure we're connected here. Hey everybody, how's it going? Good to see you. Happy Easter to everybody. It is Easter. Today is April the 4th, 2021. Uh, tonight I'm joined by Kyle McClelland. Uh, Kyle was nice enough to come in. We're going to talk about some potchkey stuff. We're going to talk about some river fishing. We're going to go over how to tie up some spawn. We're going to go over how to brine. We're going to go over a bunch of stuff. Kyla, whoops, hold on. I got to turn my volume down because I hear myself. <laughs> I can hear myself many, many times, actually. I seem to be repeating. All right. So I apologize. I got the computer set up right here. Um, let me know. Can you guys hear us? See it's okay? Everything like that. I also want to make sure on that. But I do got the computer set up here because there's no way I'm going to be able to, with my old eyes, I'm going to be able to read those comments all the way over there. But I uh, got a lot of nice people tuning in. Mark Pearson's here, Icehog 1990. Icehog, it was nice to meet you the other day, by the way. Thanks for coming in the shop. Will Spencer, Mike Fairchild's here, Barry Ecavaria, I hope I'm saying that right, Barry. Barry, I think you're from New Hampshire, if I remember. I think you uh, jumped in last week and uh, said hello to everybody. Cliff French, Bruce McFadden. Bruce, I get your emails all the time. I, I really appreciate all the ideas that you give us uh, or give me for uh, some upcoming videos. you got some great ideas. Keep them coming. Greg Schmidt says, all good. Brad Dutchman's here. Dakota Joe, good to see you, Joe. Always good to see you. Can't miss you. Like nine feet tall. I can never miss you. Uh, Matt Kohler's here. Matt Presidents. Matt, always good to see you. Thanks again for uh, donating all those things to the channel, Matt. Um, Scott Argetsinger is here. So if you're new here, you don't know who Scott Argetsinger is. Scott is the uh, general manager at Dreamweaver. He's a heck of a fisherman in his own right. Uh, he is great to have here on the channel. If you've got any questions for Dreamweaver, jump on here. Talk to Scott. He's, uh, he's always happy to answer questions. Um, and I appreciate, I always appreciate him being here. But we got Canadians here. We got Kevin Gillis here. Good to see you. We got Patrick McGovern, Mark McConaughey. Man, a lot of names that I recognize. A lot of good people here. So, again, happy Easter to everyone. How many people do we got? I got to get cold on. I can't see. We got 50 some people. I can't see. I got to go over there and look. Uh, we got like 50 some people here, so we'll give it a couple more minutes and I'll give out a quick fishing report and then uh, we'll get on here um, with uh, some of the potchkey stuff. So let me ask you this first off, yeah. because I know I already asked you this, but I want, I want this on the camera. How do you pronounce it? Potsky. Potsky. I've heard a million different ways. Uh, so, yep. so like <laughs> if, like P-O-T-S-K-I, just want to say potsky. Yep. That's the way. Okay. That's what, well, I'm lucky I got it right earlier. Because I've heard it a million different ways, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a million funny ways as well. All right. All right, a couple things to go over here real quick. First off, last week, um, you know, we talked about the thumbs up on the video. You guys knocked it out of the park. You, on that last video, we got almost 400 thumbs up on that thing. Thank you so much for doing that. And I said if we got over 300, I'd give something away. So I was going to do this anyway. But then Ice Hog, 1990, a subscriber here on the channel, stopped in the shop a couple days ago. Nice to talk with you. He bought some things. He walked over to me and he goes, here, for the channel uh, to give away on this Sunday's live feed. So really cool of the guy. Um, so, combination. Yeah, great combination right here. Um, so for this week, just like we've done in the past, I'm going to pick a number between 1 and 1,000. So after this video is over, you got to make sure it's after the video is over, after it posts to YouTube. Don't do it now. Um, my mom did that one night. She posted it. I had to talk with my mom. But uh, <laughs> make sure after the video is posted, pick a number between one and a thousand. The person that gets it right first will get a pearl fish scale spin doctor eight inch, which is a great spin doctor, and a KRW daybreak fly. And that you're right, Kyle. This is a great combination. Um, so yeah, winner's gonna get that. So thank you again for the thumbs up. That's huge. So I did a little research on the thumbs up. And uh, I don't mean to bore anybody here, but the thumbs up are just huge for the channel. The, the way it works, YouTube's algorithm is, say, say there's two channels, like my channel and another channel. We both have the same content. And say that channel has 50,000 subscribers and I have 10. But if my channel gets more thumbs up, uh, the more YouTube puts it into their algorithm. They think more interaction, more people are watching it more people want to see it. My channel will actually get more views on a video um, than that, that channel that has 50,000 or 100,000 subscribers, uh, just because that's the way YouTube looks at it. So it's huge. 
you guys and gals out there are driving this channel forward. So I wanted to say thanks. Just take a moment to do that. Um, so thanks again. Thanks for the thumbs up. And let's see if we get to 400 this week. Wait a minute, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. Store. I like Kyle's enthusiasm. <laughs> get on here, guys. Let's check this stuff out. <laughs> so we just met tonight, honestly. We don't even know each other. But he's a super nice guy. I can tell that already. Good river fisherman. Uh, I've heard your name around quite a few times. I know you run a great charter, uh, great guide service out there in the river. But we'll talk about that there in a second. Uh, let's do the fixture. Oh, before we do that, if anybody needs a three-in-one transducer, this is the uh, this is off of Simrad. So I'll work with Simrad. Should work with Lawrence as well and B&G. Um, I just took this off my boat. I had this thing on there last year. I never used it. Just stayed on the boat. Um, I figured out in a hurry that I don't need down scan or side scan imaging on my boat. So I went with my other transducer. So it just sat there all year. I just took it off. If anybody's looking for one, I think they're like 250, 270 new. I'll sell that thing for 150 bucks. Um, and like I said, it's brand new. It just sat there all year. So it's basically right out of the box, almost. Just a little bit of wear. But no, it looks good. It looks good. 150 bucks if you want it. Email me, ChrisTangleTackle at gmail.com. Um, first person that jumps on there and says they want it and sends me the money, it's yours. Cool. All right, fishing report. So first I'm going to defer to Kyle because you've been out on the river lately. Yep. What's been going on out there? Uh, it's been a tough year. You know, the water's been so low this year. We just haven't had any big runs of fish. And, you know, generally early mid-March, we'll have a big rain. The snow will melt off, and uh, it'll kind of set us up. You know, we'll have a big big run of fish come in. and But we just haven't had that this year. It's just been like little trickles of fish, and the numbers just seem to be down, to be honest. Yeah, I, I agree. From everybody I talked about on the piers also. Yeah. A lot of times this time of the year, the piers are really going as well, and the numbers just aren't there. So I know the river bite has been tough. Uh, what has been working for you though? So I've, I've been fishing mostly spawn, some beads too, switching up back and forth. You know, usually in the boat I'll have, you know, one of my clients run a spawn bag, one a bead, and kind of go from there to see on every day something a little different works better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just kind of spawning beads this time of year. In winter time I like jigs and wax rooms and some spawn, you know, put some meat on the hook, but this time of year spawning beads seems to work best for me. Yeah, I agree. Great. Thanks, Kyle. So also around here, the perch bite has been good the last couple of days, right here in Manistee Lake, um, right off the Night Street launch. There's been a ton of boats out. I think half the town was out there um, this last week and the amount of boats that I saw out there, but uh, they've been getting some real nice perch. It's been perch rigs with wigglers have been the, uh, the ticket out there. On the pier heads, there has been some fish showing up, a few browns, not many, um, a few coho, again, not many, a few steelhead, not many, uh, but there are some fish out there to be caught. Some people I've talked to who have been out fishing the big lake have been doing pretty good. A lot of lake trout out there. Uh, people just running the uh, sandbars. One color, two color, three colors, flat lines, um, divers down near the bottom, stick baits, spoons, green and blue spoons have been good. Uh, double chrome with whirly gigs and spinning glows have also been good down near the bottom, you know, down on your divers and on your riggers as well. So if you're looking to get out there, put some fish in the boat, lake trout is a good way to do it. Um, they're plentiful this time of the year. They're up in the shallows. They're chasing bait in warm water. So if you want to get out there and get on the big lake, right now is a great time to go out there. You can fill up a cooler with lake trout pretty darn quick. Yeah, pretty darn quick. So, all right, let's check out the comments, see what we're missing here. Tons of thumbs up. Thanks, guys and gals. Thank you for, thanks to everyone for doing that. Um, again, like I said, happy Easter to everyone. It's always, uh, always nice to see everybody here on a Sunday night. Um, my wife was nice enough. She, I said, hey, I got to go to the shop and do a video. She wasn't real happy about it, but uh, she's a sweetheart, so she, it's no big deal. All right, let's see some of the comments. Chris, what's going on with Big John? Talked to Big John not long ago. Um, the last I knew, the new downrigger, the new rod holders are in testing and evaluation. Uh, they, they went to a, a secondary company. They, they'd like to evaluate um, through other people's eyes. So they've gone to another eval company and look at these things, identify any problems. That's where, that's the last I knew where it stood. Past that, I don't know. Hopefully soon though on the new uh, downriggers and the new rod holders, because I've seen them and they're nice. Well, the rod holders are on my boat, but the new downriggers, they are nice. They're super nice. Uh, what else we got? Do, 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 do. A couple kings in Indiana. Good to see. You. Oh, Jason. Jason Wilkerson. Good to see you, man. Jason, you guys going to be out running the trail again this year out there with a uh, with uh, I'm sorry with Kicker. I know you're on Team Kicker if I remember right. So good luck to you guys if you're out there running the trail. Oh, that also reminds me. Next week 
we're going to have Scotty Mack here on the channel. Scotty's going to be right here by me. We're going to talk about tournament trail. We're going to talk about 333, tournament fishing. All your questions will be answered, so make sure to jump on here next week as well. Get your questions ready for Scotty. <clears throat> All right, let's get into what we're here for. Potsky. Yes. Let's, let's talk about this stuff. Um, let's go over, let's do this. I'm going to move this right out of the way. So Kyle's going to be able to read the questions. I'm going to be able to read the questions. We're going to go over how he cures his eggs. He's got some fresh, uh, is it steelhead spawn? Yep. Sure looks like it. Um, he's got some fresh spawn here. He's going to cure some, go over how, to, how he likes to do it, the products that he uses. He's going to tie up some spawn bags, show everybody how to do that. He's going to go over some of his techniques as well for rigging up a rig. Um, he's going to go over a lot of stuff, so I'm really lucky to have him here again. Let's get into that. Let me. I'm going to grab the camera, actually. I'm going to bring it over here so we can see what's going on. So let's do that. <laughs> also, the shot of me from the down, you know, the down angle. <laughs> uh, I always think I look like Shrek. Anyway, um, so Kyle, again, thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. How long have you been out here fishing Manistee? Um, I've been I've been fishing the area for about ten years now. I've been a full time guide for about five years. Okay. Um, yeah, I started doing walking weight trips, and I worked my way up, and I got some at a couple river boats now. So great. All right, what's the name of your guide? Uh, it's guide XXL service. XXL Chrome Chaser. XXL Chrome Chaser. That's yep. the name of your guide service. Yep. How can people find you if they want to jump on the web? You can uh, check out my website, xxlchromechasing.com, and we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and we just started a YouTube channel, too, where we do weekly YouTube videos, so you can check that out as well. Is that XXL Chrome Chasing also on YouTube? Yep. All right, cool. So, yeah, if you guys want to get uh, more involved here with Kyle's, if you want to go on a trip, hey, give him a call. I know he's a great guy from what I've heard. I've never fished <laughs> with him, but by reputation, I think you're a good guide, and uh, his YouTube channel is pretty good as well. So let's get into this. Potsky, um, Potsky makes a bunch of different things. I know that. Talk about a little bit about what you use it for. Yeah, so we got kind of, this is just our basic, you know, this is pretty much all you need for river fishing in the state of Michigan and the Great Lakes for uh, kings and steelhead. So, you know, this this fire gear here, this is mostly what I use for kings, so we're not going to do a whole lot with that today. Um, you know, that's going to penetrate, that's going to get your eggs that real vibrant color. You know, you can get them vibrant pink. Uh, red then you know hit them with some Braxo fire after but for today with our steelhead eggs pretty much when I cure up my steelhead eggs I only use one cure really and it's this natural Braxo fire this is actually out of my boat um, so <laughs> the jar is a little beat up but this is all I use for steelhead guys uh, it's it's really basic too I mean these these are some eggs I already have done up here I'm gonna show you those in a minute but these are some eggs these are fresh eggs here um, this was actually out of a hen that we caught yesterday and uh, she was half loose, had half loose eggs and half some skein. So, um, yeah, so this is pretty much our product here. So, um, I, I just want to jump in there with a question real quick because yeah. I know some people don't know this. What is skein versus loose eggs? So, skein is like when the eggs are still in the membrane. So, when they're still tight in the membrane, you know, and the fish, as they mature and they get closer to spawning, they'll develop, you know, they'll, that membrane will they'll, they'll just become loose. And so, Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. So these are all out of the skein then, or you said some are loose, some are in the skein. Yeah. All right. So uh, what are we going to do here tonight? So yeah, I, I scraped these yesterday. So guys, when you get your fish, it's really important to bleed it out right away as soon as you catch it. Um, that's going to make a huge difference with your eggs. I, I fumbled with that for qu quite a while, but yeah, bleed it out right away when you catch them here. Um, then as soon as you get these home eggs home at night, scrape them free of the membrane. Take a plastic spoon, roll them on some paper towel, and just scrape those eggs because you're going to have, you know, two membranes generally, and you just want to scrape those right away. You want to do it the night you get them. If you wait a night, those eggs will kind of get mushy, and they just won't scrape, and they won't turn out as nice. Yeah. So um, what we got here is I already scraped these because I did these last night. But, yeah, when you do them with your spoon, just take your time. Just gently scrape them free of the membrane. They'll fall off. Just go slow. Take your time. And uh, so yeah, that's what we have here. Now, to get these to preserve is just, it really couldn't be easier. And I'll do these up, especially it's nice because you know I'll do a whole bunch up at a time for uh, guiding, you know, so I'll have a good supply for a week or two. Um, couple, keep a couple fish and have some good bait. And all I'm gonna do is just sprinkle about a spoonful here over top of them. And I'm just gonna roll these eggs around. And you don't wanna overdo this, guys. It doesn't take too much here. Uh, if you over cure them, you know, you, you can kind of burn your eggs and um, they just won't turn out as nice. So just one one spoonful across the top. And this is just two skeins, you know, out of about a seven, eight pound fish, I'd say. 
um, roll those around. Now, if, if you burn your eggs, how can they tell if uh, if they've gone bad or been um, burned? Yeah, they'll be they'll get really hard. You know, they'll get hard at times, um, and they'll just kind of dry up fast. And you know, you'll just see a lot of excess cure in the bag, and you, your eggs just won't turn out as nice. You'll okay. see a big difference if you do it. Just you know, use this stuff. Um, pretty generous. You, you can always add more, but you can't take any away once you dump it on there. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to do like one more here. And this should be about good, really. You know, when you mix these around, you just want to see that dusting of dusting of cure all throughout your eggs. And mix them around good, you know. And uh, you want, when you start this process too, you want your eggs kind of dry. So what I like to do before I start this, and I already did this with these eggs, is roll them around in some paper towel a few times because the more, the more of those juices you can get out and the less eggs you can pop when you're scraping them, the better your eggs are going to turn out. You want those nice dry eggs and then they're just going to, the color's going to hold when you're fishing them and they're going to turn out really nice and preserve well too. Now, if I remember, you, got a, you have a video on your YouTube channel. You show the whole process, drying the eggs, curing the eggs also, don't you? Yeah, you can check that out. Uh, you know, it's start to finish, keep how to bleed the fish out, all, the whole process. So you can uh, well, check I'll, that out. I'll put a link actually in this video uh, after this uh, is done posting. I'll put a link up top there. People can jump on and they can watch that as well. All right, so we got so we got the brine on there. Can you show me the bottle and uh, yeah. show, let me see exactly what it is that you're using it's here? It's a little torn up, but yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's been used. <laughs> been under the boat. So this is the uh, the borax fire or the borks fire, however they say that borax yep. fire. That's <laughs> <laughs> enough. Exactly. All right, cool. All right, so we got two spoonfuls of that on the eggs. And you, you just sprinkled it on there. You mixed it around. Uh, it looks like it's starting to cure up a little bit. You can actually see the color starting to change. Yeah. Um, so what are we going to go from here? Or where are we going from here? So these are, honestly, this is how I fish them. You know, I, I'll freeze them like this. Um, if I freeze them, you know, I'll just, I'll just simply roll them in some paper towel. I'll roll them up in paper towel, freeze them flat. I just put them in a Ziploc and get as much air out as I can. I mean, um, and they turn out fine. You can vacuum seal them too, but the thing with vacuum sealing I found is you don't want to it's a fine line with vacuum sealing because if you vacuum seal them too tight, you're going to squish a lot of your eggs when you do it. Absolutely. So that's why I like to use just like a freezer bag. And really, that's the biggest thing you want to avoid is, is breaking your eggs. Yeah, if you can do it without breaking your eggs, it's just going to make a night and day difference. Now, if you, if you freeze these, Kyle, how long do you find that they'll, they'll last in the freezer? So I don't, like to, I don't like to keep these in the freezer for more than about six months or so, six, eight months. You know, I, I always like to keep my bait kind of fresh. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'll start with Chinook eggs in the fall. Um, as we're catching kings, that's what I'll start. And I'll fish with Chinook eggs for steelhead all the way till mid-February. But then once mid-February comes around, those steelhead eggs will start getting more developed in our winter fish. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep one here and there just for some bait. And when a guy wants to take one home, and I'll start fishing with that, you know, throughout uh, February, March, and April. Okay. Now, once you've uh, brined these like you just done, how long do, do those normally last for? How long are they good for? I mean, I'll have these in the fridge for a couple, couple weeks. Okay. You know, a couple, two, three weeks, really. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, if you had these in the fridge for another week or two, and you know, it wouldn't hurt to add another spoonful or two of Braxifier in there too, if you want right. to keep them in the fridge a little longer. But so um, essentially, these eggs are brined right now; they're ready to be they're fished. Ready to go? Yeah, I just like for still, I like that natural color. You know, if I'm fishing like a really high, dirty water, which we just haven't had this year, um, sometimes I'll cure them up in this fire cure. So this fire cure, this Braxifier, guys, this isn't gonna turn your eggs color. This is just. This is going to add scent, it's going to firm your eggs up, and it's just going to, you know, it's going to protect those eggs and it's going to firm them up. But uh, this, fire cure, is what's really going to penetrate those eggs. So when you run this stuff, you know, you sprinkle this stuff on, those eggs are going to juice out and it's going to get really juicy in that bag of your eggs you got. And then what happens is you want to keep them at room temperature in about 12 hours, those eggs reabsorb the juices and they get that real vibrant color. I mean, they'll be, your eggs will all be cherry red. And this is what I use for kings. Um, then I'll also hit them with Braxifier after. Um, but yeah, if you want your eggs to get that vibrant color, you know, don't use the Braxifier. Um, but just, uh, this is good when a good combination, this is why it's red, is because it, it just works as a really good combination with the fire cure. So like when I cure king eggs, I'll cure it in fire cure first, then I'll dust it off in this Braxifier here. Okay. Now, what are the, what's the benefit for steelhead eggs versus king eggs? Um, you know, I just kind of like to, as they say, match the hatch, you know, uh, when there's a lot of spawning salmon in the river system, you know, I like to fish king eggs. Then once later in the year, you know, mid-February, a lot of our winter fish will start spawning. And that's when I like to kind of go to steelhead eggs. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I believe also. Yep, match the hatch. Yeah. Always, always, a great, always a great thing to do. 
All right, so we got these brined up. What do you think? We'll tie some up? Yeah, we'll tie a few up. Let's here. go. Let's go ahead and do that. So we just got some uh, Atlas mics netting here and some Miracle Thread. Um, I like this Miracle Thread best just because it's thin and it ties nice bags. And I like the Atlas netting as well best too, just because it's a soft mesh and you know it's it's really nice to tie with. It makes it easy. Some of the netting, you know, it's kind of it's firm and it pops your eggs when you tie, but you oh, can yeah. tie really nice bags. Absolutely. Um, so. Yeah, I'll just take a piece here. Now, if anybody's looking for these products, they're right here available in Tangle Tackle. If you go on the website, tangletacklecompany.com, they're all right here and available. And we'll actually talk about a sale here in just a few minutes. So I'll just put a few of those there, guys. So as about three quarters of a spoonful there? Yeah, you can tie them up any size you want. You know, this is probably what I like is about a nickel size. Maybe take a couple out. I might have put too much in, but about the size of a nickel or a dime. Especially when the water's low, you know. If I'm fishing high, dirty water, I might tie it the size of a quarter or maybe even a little bigger. But for this low water, I mean, that's perfect right there. Just a little nice yep. nickel-sized dime. Bag. Looks good. So I'm just going to, I got this right in the middle of the uh, netting here. So I'm just going to fold each corner here. Okay, so I'm just going to fold each corner here. And just, you want to use soft hands when you're tying these bags. You know, don't, don't, don't force break, anything. Don't break the eggs. Exactly, because if you tie your bags without breaking eggs, they're just going to fish that much better. So... When I start wrapping, so when I start twisting this here, I'm just gonna gently start twisting it. I'm just gonna start twisting it. You don't wanna twist it all the way tight. You know, I, you just wanna twist it tight enough so it starts to get snug, but you can start to see a little, there's a little bit of play in there, but not much, you know, that's perfect right there. Good. So I'm gonna take this miracle thread here. Well, this miracle uh, thread actually is kind of miracle thread, like the way that it ties. It works pretty good. Uh, so I'll just wrap it around two, three times, you know, kind of just snug it up a bit. One, two, three, four, snug it up a bit. One, two, and break it. That's yep. it. So that miracle thread actually stretches, right? Yeah, so it's going to stretch and stretch right around your bag there. Um, and, you, you know, when you're first starting, if you haven't done it, you're going to break it a couple times. But once you get the hang of it, it's, Absolutely. it's easy. Then you just take your scissors and trim it off right there, guys. And that's a perfect bag that's going to fish really well. That does look pretty good. Yep, definitely. So we want to maybe put one of these on a rig or something? Yeah, we can show you kind of just the general, you know, float fishing rig here that I like to use with this uh, spawn bag. Sounds good. Um, so, you know, we got a bunch of different float sizes. These are Ravens. Blood Run works really well. I know Bud's got a lot here in the shop. Um, so you guys can come by and pick some of those up. Um, I like the fast and deep. Like I said, Blood Run makes the same float. I like the fast and deep floats because because our rivers have, you know, they're fast and there's a lot of deep holes in them. So these seem to work best. Um, and so if I'm fishing like a big river, like the Muskegon, Manistee, I'm going to fish a 20 gram. I'm going to fish a 20 gram. But if I'm fishing like, you know, a smaller size river, I don't know, like the Pier Marquette or something like that, I might go down to an 11 or even a 5 gram in this lower water. Um, just because just a smaller presentation and yep. you don't need as much faster weight. water you get the bigger the bigger floats yep that mm. bigger deeper water you know so you know guys when you spool up you know you can do this on a spinning rod bait caster center pen if i'm fishing on you know a smaller stream like a 9.6 to a 10.6 rod is perfect but for like a bigger river system you know you might want to go up uh 13 or so but a good all-around rod for both is like an 11.6. Yep. Medium light for steelhead, that's perfect. Yep. Um, Bud's got all kinds of good steelhead rods in here you can come check out. Um, so, yeah. Now we got, I just run just a basic main line. This is Trilene Extra Tough. I run Smooth Cast too, but this Extra Tough seems to be good stuff for me. Um, so, yeah, I just run a basic mono. I like to run a mono as my main line. You said 12-pound? Yeah, yep. Okay. So, if I'm... So I like 12 because when it's cold, those cold mornings, that 12 pound seems to go through your rod guys a little easier. But, you know, it's sometimes if you get too, how do I want to say this? If you run 12 with a 10 liter, you're going to lose more floats is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. But if you go up to a 14 to a 10 liter, you're going to not lose as many floats. But sure. um, So the combination I like to do is drop down like four pounds in test. So we got 12 pound mainline and run like an eight pound liter. That's a perfect combination that I like. Very good. Um, so I'll take this main line, just say this is strung up on any, whatever reel you'd like, you know. And I'll take my float here. So just use any kind of, this is an 11 gram. And this is 11 gram here. can be used on a smaller or bigger river. But I'll put this tubing on here. You can get this here as well. So I'll put a kind of a smaller piece in the top and longer piece in the bottom. Thread that through. And that's what's going to slide up your line just like that. And that's what's going to hold your bobber on your line. So I'm going to slide that bobber on. OK. 
Okay, now this is gonna slide. Now this is how you can adjust your depth. All you gotta do is slide your bobber up and down in line. There you go. But little tip here, get your line wet before you slide this bobber because you will fray your line if you don't and then you'll snap off your main line. <laughs> Absolutely. Something goofy will happen. So get I'll, that line Always wet. lubricate your line. Yep. And uh, so here guys, just gonna put a little small black barrel swivel. Um, as well, Bud's got all this terminal, good terminal tackle here. You don't have to get fancy. I just like some sort of small black barrel swivel. This is, uh, you know, Raven, Blood Run, both make good ones. And uh, tie this on. I just use a regular old clinch knot. Nothing fancy here. Always works well for me. Tied that knot a few times, have you? Yeah, a couple. Get that wet. Trim that tag piece. Okay. Now we're going to take our leader on here. Now, I just like to run maybe a, I don't know, 22, 24 inch liter um, of eight pound test flow carbon. So, snip that off. Tie this on the other end of our swivel here. Okay. Now, another little tip here, too, guys, is if you're running like a center pin or a bait caster or something, especially when it's cold out, if you're getting bad line twist, um, there's a few different ways you can. Uh, avoid or help out your line twist. One of them is when I first uh, when I first spool up this line, I'll I'll be in the parking lot when I first put it on my reel. I'll get in the parking lot and I'll tie it off to like a, I don't know just a pole or something or my tailgate hitch, you know, and pull it. And I'll mm -hmm. stretch that line up just so it's just about to break, and you'll feel that line really stretch. And that's I mean you will see a night and day difference. Oh, absolutely. I promise. Yeah. And uh, you can also you know get it wet, spool it up in some warm water, and that helps too. Um, but yeah, and also you can put a little tiny micro swivel like Raven and Blood Run make extra small micro swivels. So if you are having more line twists, you can put one above your bobber. So and I can you can even slide this bobber with this tubing over that little swivel and you can kind of maneuver it like that. But that will help you if you're getting line twists. Great tip. So here we got our leader, floor carbon leader now. Now I'm gonna put on our hook. What I like to run is uh you know just this is a Raven specialist hook, but you can run like an owner, like the mosquito hook, you know, that's a good hook. Um, but I like, you know, the tra I'm just not a big fan of the traditional egg octopus hook where that, you know, the eyelet kind of curves back. I seem to, you know, lose more fish like that. And if you do do that, you might want to snell your hook, you know, that helps a little bit. But I like these, you know, how that eyelet's a little straighter. I seem to hook more fish like that and keep them on there better. But uh, anyways. What size hook is that, Kyle? This is a four. Number four. Um, yep, this is a number four. I like a number four and number six. Okay. Um, yeah, those are both good sizes. Bigger bags, you know, you might want to go number four, but if you're fishing, actually, if you're fishing little tiny bags like this in clear water, you might want to drop down to a six. Beautiful. Um, so, just same kind of knot here, just regular old clinch knot. Nothing fancy. And now, uh, that line went. And we're just gonna put our split shot on here, guys. So uh, you want to you want to run. I like to run uh, just a staggered split shot pattern. So I'll run split shot all the way from my bobber to my hook, because that way you know your you know your bait's gonna be vertical underneath your float. You know you're in the strike zone. And I like to weight this bobber down. You're gonna have to play with this a little bit. Like you're gonna have to adjust your weight, add a little more. But you want that bobber. I like it just riding just above the surface. You know just. I like to put as much weight on as I can, like I said, because that's the way I know my bait's down in the strike zone and it's getting down to where those fish are at, you know. Um, so I'll start here. I forget what size these are. I think they're fives or something. I'll put one bigger shot. I think I could be wrong. This might be a five. But Bud's got all these kind of sizes of split shot in here. And I like to run the ones without wings on them, you know, um, just because that helps with line twists mm -hmm. a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I'll just kind of clamp these on with some pliers here. Now these are going on the main line, not the leader. Yeah, I'll just yep. start with some bigger ones up by my float. And I'll just kind of, you know, run a couple different size splits. I'll start with a couple bigger ones, one or two big ones by your float, and just, you know, run, you know, I think maybe that's a seven. I can't remember. That looks like a head. seven. I just buy them in bulk um, <laughs> and go through a lot of them. Uh, I'll clamp them on here. About, about eight inches apart or so is what I like to space them out down to. Um, then on my leader here, I'm going to add some more too. I'm going to show you guys that f final product here. But I'll put usually three on my leaders. Seems to be about good. Then your smallest shot, 
you know, you can go down to a, even a BB shot. I like to put a BB shot usually. I don't have one ready with me here, but usually I like to put a BB shot just like eight inches above that hook. You know, you can get, um, yeah, just like a small little BB shot eight inches above the hook, you know, and that's perfect. But I'll just put on one of these here for just now, just to show you guys. Beautiful. Okay. Just like that, you know, nice and, I like to, just nice and evenly, you don't have to get too fancy with it, but it's kind of somewhat even, you know. About eight inches apart, you said, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah, like I said, guys, just, you know, monkey with it, whatever size, you know, bobber you're running, just weight down your weight until uh, you get it perfect. And you're going to have to play with it a little bit, but just, uh, let's... Just get it tuned in. Steelhead's is a game of little details. Yeah, just so, get it tuned in. That's the biggest in. thing. You will you figure it out as you go, too, like anything yeah. else. You figure it out. You, you realize, okay, that's not right, that's not right. I got to tune this, tune this, and all of a sudden you just get it right. Yep. 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 All right, so when you're putting your spawn bag on your hook, yeah. can you show us how to do that? Yeah, because absolutely. a lot of people I know, there's some questions out there. Do I put it through the eggs? Do I just put it through the mesh? Yeah, yep. and that's just, that was a good point uh, to bring up here because... When I first started fishing, I messed up with this line. Oh, yeah, fish. I did too. Um, if you, you know, because your initial thought is bury that hook in there, hide mm -hmm. that hook. But you don't want to do that because you'll lose a lot of fish. You'll get a lot of head shake, head shake, bam, off or something, you know. Absolutely. So opposite side of the knot, and I just like to go just barely inside the netting there. Just like that. Just so that hook's exposed, that barb's exposed, you know. Yep. And like yep. I said, that hook's a little big, guys, for what I like, to be honest. Uh, I like it. Probably would run a six with that, but that's a four. It'll work though. That'll work. Yeah. But so not through any of the eggs, just through the mesh. Yeah, you pop a couple, but yeah, you're gonna, right. of course. Yeah, <laughs> that is all right. Yep. All right, great. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna put the camera back on the tripod. We're gonna field some questions. There we go. Well, Kyle, thank you very much for doing that. Absolutely, really appreciate you coming in. All right, so whatever questions you guys and gals got out there for Kyle, for anything, send them out here. Um, we'll, uh, we'll get those answered up for you right now. If you want to talk about anything else, I'm happy to do that also. Greg Golib, good to see you, Greg. Let's talk about this, though, to start. So, in, uh, how do I want to say this? You guys will probably figure this out. Um, if you become a member on Tangle Tackle, and again, I've talked about this in the past, it doesn't cost a thing. You go on the website, front page, put in your email address, and you're automatically, you're a member right there as soon as you hit enter. Again, we don't sell any information. We don't take your email and give it to anyone. It's strictly in our system only. When you become a member, you're gonna get special deals, special discounts, special sales. So, because we're doing a Potski thing tonight, we're going to do 20% off the Potski products starting at 9 p.m. tonight until Wednesday. And when you put your, when you go in there and become a member, you'll get an email tonight at 9 p.m. with a code that you gotta use, the parameters of the uh, sale, when it ends, when it stops, everything you're gonna need is right there. All you gotta do, so you got till, uh, what is that, an hour and a half away, if you're not a member yet, jump in there, become a member, it doesn't cost a thing. Grab yourself some Potsky stuff, get ready to go out there and get those steelhead. Um, that was a great seminar you did there, Kyle. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I learned a few things myself. I always like having people in here that know more than me because I get to learn then too. You learn a little bit from everybody. You do. You know? yep. I learn every day I'm on the boat, without yep. a doubt. I learn from everyone. All right, uh, Cliff Wrench, can you use this on shrimp? Yeah, you can. You know, if I was going to use shrimp, uh, you'd want to use a fire cure um, just because that's going to really... You know it's going to turn that shrimp the color you want but i would use that you know if you want to just kind of preserve your shrimp or add add scent to it you know you can run this braxifier and yeah it'll absolutely work with shrimp i use it with shrimp for sure absolutely mania in the summertime yeah uh george DeBros, do you uh cure skein the same way um no so skein's kind of totally different really uh you know well salmon skein is that what we're talking about i believe so yeah so if we're you know if you're fishing like skein um for kings and you're running big globs no i mean that's totally different so what i do for that you know obviously bleed your fish out take your skein home the same night then you'll just sprinkle a, you know a good light layer on each side hit the membrane side maybe do it one more time on the eggs massage them in with some rubber gloves get them you know get that cure inside the skein but keep your membrane whole i like to then let that skein put it at room temperature in the bag put it in your ziploc let it cure for you know 
I don't know, 12 hours overnight. And you want it at room temperature because a big mistake I made is I put it in the fridge when I would put my kier on it wow. and the eggs wouldn't reabsorb the juices like they were supposed to and they would turn out mushy and you know, but once I started doing like that, it was just night and day. Then after that process and at the end, I like to add this Braxo fire to my skeins because it firms up those eggs and, and it'll keep them together better. It'll keep them so they hold on your hook a little better. And also those kings really like the sense in this stuff, sense in this stuff is honestly really good. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it does. I'm just saying that. No, no, it, I, you're Potsky Pro Staff, I know that. Yeah. Uh, but you're, you're like me, you represent companies that you believe in. Yeah. Like I, I I'm a Dreamweaver guy through and through. Yep. I, and I'm pro staff for them, but that doesn't mean um, that I gotta love them. But I do love it anyway. I like, yep. I like representing companies that I trust. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Somebody's gonna. Somebody wants a sushi recipe of the week. I don't think we can do that. Sushi recipe of the week. I don't think we can do that. Uh, would you be using the same setup for the fall coho run on the plant? For the fall coho run? Yeah. You know, uh, cohos are little but yeah as far as the bobber rig absolutely you know especially with the lighter setup eight pound absolutely lighter rod medium light 100 percent um coho what i like for coho baits best is marabou jigs and wax rooms for one like blacks and olives mm -hmm. really good colors um but also i like to run like i'll take the same bags that i cure up or the same eggs that i cure up for kings and i'll tie those in bags and cohos love that stuff you can get them on the natural stuff too but yeah jigs and that cured bait tied in bags is what absolutely. works absolutely coal Good great, great question, Mark Pearson. Good question, man. Uh, Steve Ordway, good to see you. Oh, Leroy Dowding's here. Leroy's from Purple Taco Fly Supply. Always great to have him on here. I'm sure he's been shagging some questions. Um, Carl Fitzgerald. Boy, wonder who that is. Yeah, I've heard that name before. <laughs> he might own this place. <laughs> uh, he wants to know how long, once the eggs are cured, how long will they last? Um, so it all depends. You know, like I said, I with these steelhead eggs we just did up here i'd say that's safe to be in the fridge for a couple weeks okay. uh, for sure you know but if you know after a couple weeks if you still want to keep them in the fridge and you want them a little longer maybe just add another spoonful of spoonful or two of braxo fire on and that'll preserve them a little longer for you absolutely all right scott wagner's going to the big lake in a couple weeks any advice scott talk to the locals down there Glean the information off them as, mess, as best you can. Obviously, I'm not getting a ton of information up here from there, but from what I've heard, it's been, it's been good. Um, it sounds like maybe it's starting to trail off a little, though, but uh, uh, definitely talk to the locals down there, and if anybody's on here that can help Scott out, that's what this, this, is, that's what this is all about. Ryan Hart says, what's up, Kyle? Oh, what's up, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> he gave you a couple of finger waves there. All right, cool. All right, that's... That's going to be it for tonight, I believe. Kyle, thank you so much for coming in and doing that for me. Absolutely. Um, again, we're giving away this spin doctor and fly tonight. you got to pick a number between 1 and 1,000. Post it in the comments after this video was posted to YouTube. The person that gets the, uh, the number right, the first person wins that. And also, like I said, if anybody's looking for a 3-in-1 transducer, thing is like new, $150. I'll, uh, I'll give it to you. Oh, uh, what's uh, what is Kyle's guide service name again? What was it again? It's uh, XXL Chrome Chasing. XXL Chrome Chasing, and that's the name of your YouTube channel, also. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks to everybody. Thanks for the thanks for all the thumbs up. Again, that's huge for the channel. You guys and gals are driving this channel forward. Um, the more thumbs up we get, the better the channel does. So thank you for that. Big here's thumbs ups to you. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get out of here. Kyle, thanks again. Let's, uh, let's go fishing. Yeah. I want to go, go fishing. Now. Yeah, go get them for All sure. All right, we'll get out of here. See you guys. <laughs>